Yeah, how's everybody doing this fine Friday? Thank you for stopping by my channel today and welcome if you are new here. I always love some fresh faces. In this video, we're going to kickstart a new reality show on this channel, The Challenge. We will get to know the format of the show, some changes from previous seasons, and finally, meet the 24 challengers that will compete on this season. I'm already excited, so let's get to it. We'll start by going over the format of the challenge, which is mostly inspired by The Challenge USA, aka the most recent season that I watched and love. The 24 challengers will get the chance to meet each other and talk on the first day before forming and competing in teams of two, consisting of one female and one male for the challenges, which is when the real action begins. Each round of the challenge will start with the captain's challenge, aka the main challenge on the first day. The teams will then compete and the winning team will become captains for the round. The last placing team will automatically be entered into the battlegrounds for elimination. The captains then have a day to discuss the name of the team to be put into the battlegrounds against the last place team. The next night, everybody will gather at the battlegrounds where the last place team will go head to head against the team selected by the captains in an elimination challenge where the losing team will be eliminated from the game for good. Good. In addition, winners of the captain's challenge will earn a squishmallow each. Yeah, I'm in love with these things. And credits go to the CC creator Bella Sims for these cuties. Link in the description below. Challengers will need at least one squishmallow to be qualified to run in the finale, otherwise, they're not eligible. Challengers can also steal squishmallows from others via elimination. So maybe entering the battlegrounds and surviving ain't always a bad thing. Now that we got the format down, let's look at some quick changes compared to previous seasons, which is not much. Each contestant will have 4 traits, but a possible 5th trait reserved for preferences such as dog lover, lactose intolerant, music lovers, and more. Also, regarding skills, I recognize that charisma and fitness are basically essentials for everybody, so everybody will have them, coupled with 3 additional other skills for a maximum of 5 skills, still at a max level of 5. I think that's about it, yay! And before we hit the cast, let's also check out the venues for this season because I'm a proud dad of my creations. <laughs> With the naval theme I have going on this season, I created this cute little party boat slash yacht for our challengers. The front of the boat has a hot tub, some lounge chairs, and a little bar for the chill evenings. And inside, we have a nice comfy living area for all the talking to go down. To the right, we have a gym for all the gym rats and the active ones in the cast. And going down the hallway, we have the kitchen and colorful dining tables on the right, and a nice old foosball table here on the left. And the bedrooms! <laughs> yeah, it looks like a freaking jail cell here with 24 bunk beds, but yeah, this place is really only for sleeping, so I really don't expect people to spend a ton of time here. Besides sleeping, that is. <laughs> the bathrooms are also pretty simple, everyone can see everyone, but that's okay, we're all family here. Moving on to the second floor on the deck now is the basketball court for yet our active ones. And along the side are some barbecue grills and some picnic tables for those who like to chomp on hamburgers while enjoying the sea breeze. I realize that a basketball court next to a picnic table is quite the hazard, but this is The Sims. Those balls ain't going anywhere besides the court. <laughs> Our first room on the deck is the game room! Coupled with arcade machines and a dance floor, this room is surely a great room to distress when the times get tough. And at the front here is the captain's quarters, where the captains can discuss with the losing teams on who to nominate and who not to. Finally, on the third and tallest level of the ship, we have some seating for those who want to relax and just have a sip of juice. And a ping pong table, cause if I've learned anything from Big Brother, I know people love this goddamn table. <laughs> Also, there's a mirror at the end for the artsy ones to scribble on. We'll see if that gets used. Now, before we head to the cast, my usual disclaimer is that this season features some fan submitted sims, and I just want to remind everybody to have fun and don't take it personally if I roast or make fun of your sim. <laughs> and if your sim is not in this season, they will be in another one. Also, since this season features some returnees from previous shows, their cast reveals will have spoilers from their original seasons. So, yeah, big spoiler alert there. No, literally, there's winners in this cast. <laughs> if you have a suggestion on how I can improve this in the future, do let me know. And now, on to the cast. We'll go down the line show by show and meet the challengers. There's a whopping 24 people here, so I'll try not to take too long on each one. Lego! Starting off with the folks from Survivor Stars of Silani. Let's welcome Kibiko Takahashi, winner 
of our first ever reality show on this channel. Since her win, the dream home decorator has been able to start a decorator studio and train her minions. I mean apprentices, as she said she would. This winner is looking to score another win on the challenge, cause it's more money, so why the hell not? <laughs> she was quite the chaotic character in her original season, being hot-headed and snobby, but her social and physical game earned the respect of her competitors. Will she be able to replicate that formula on the challenge? Our original golden boy, Sergio Solomon, is all grown up now. Ooh, I'm such a proud dad. Since Survivor ended, my dude has gotten engaged, and his facial hair is also all grown out. Sergio lost the game with 3 winning votes to Kimiko's 4, so of course he's back with a vengeance and ready to take back the crown he deserves. He is childish, restless, and outgoing, so he hopes to lean on his social game and his athleticism to get to the end as he did on Survivor. <laughs> Continuing down the line is Zahara Okoye. Zahara is a geek, a genius, a snob, and also an aspiring rocket scientist. Zahara got 7th place in Survivor Stars of Solani when she and her closest ally Sergio were both caught in a tie vote, but she ultimately bit the dust. Now she's back again and hoping to play an even smarter game. Yeah, even more so than her first time. <laughs> There's no end to those genius juices of hers. She's still close with Sergio, but this is also her time to put herself first. Zario Fletcher, ah, uh, what a robbed player. Not on my watch. Yes, Zario was an early boot in Survivor Stars of Sulani, claiming 16th place, but with special circumstances, okay? He was eliminated in a rock draw when Kimiko and Rambir ended up in a deadlocked tie. So, you can totally say that without Zario's elimination, Kimiko wouldn't have won. Since then, this guy has still been busting it out at the gym while also exploring his charm a little bit, hence his all new flirty trait here. We always need an early boot in shows like this, I mean, the only way he can go is up. First up from The Sin's Amazing Race is Brandt Hacking. Brandt raced with his husband Brent and shockingly went out in 8th place when they couldn't dive in sync and finished just seconds after the team in front of them. Now, Brent's back home with Rosie, their dog, while Brandt comes back for a second chance at the money. This hunk is active, outdoorsy, and has all the good traits. Physicality shouldn't be a problem for Brandt, but can he navigate well in a solo and social game? Eliza Pancakes, one of the many icons of the Sims 4 franchise. Eliza and Bob competed on the Sims Amazing Race together, and honestly, they started off pretty well, winning two legs, but fell victim to a U-turn by Lilith and Angela, which they could not recover from, eliminating them in 7th place. Now Eliza is back cause she thinks she can do even better without Bob. We'll see. She got the arrogant trait added to her cause… it just seems right. I mean, look at her. If she can control her arrogance and her temper, she may just take it home this time around. Kiana Omari is back for a second shot in the challenge. Kiana raced with her cousin Latoya, and they were quite a force to be reckoned with until their downfall in Salvadorada, where they were hit with a long elimination leg and they were minutes away from surviving elimination in the next one. Since then, Kiana actually worked alongside Brent to form the dream team to test my survivor challenges. So this woman is already equipped with all the skills she needs to succeed. She's competitive and has a little bit of a temper, but settle that and she's good to go. All hail one half of the winners of The Sims Amazing Race! Queen Rosa is back for more! Since her very well-deserved win in The Sims Amazing Race, she and her bandmate Diego managed to fund their local band and even managed to go on tour to all the places she visited on the race as a token of appreciation. Cool stuff! The rocking pianist also dyes her hair a different color every two months, so here's her in beautiful purple in the meantime. She loves her music and is relatively calm, but the challenge is a whole different game to play. I can't wait to see what she does. First member from the jungles of Bellomesia, Darling Walsh. Darling was distraught and pretty much lost sleep after learning that if she did take Iman to the finals, she could have won easily. Oh wait, you didn't know that either? Uh, well, now you do. <laughs> Nonetheless, Darling has more than proven herself worthy of coming back to the challenge, being the castaway with the most immunity wins in her season and the first teenager to make it to the finals. She remains active and I gave her the restless trait, cause that's basically how she was on Survivor. <laughs> I'm totally rooting for her to go far this season, if those mood swings don't get in the way again. Next up, a finalist and from the Braun tribe, Elliot Haynes. Elliot was a strategic mastermind on Survivor, orchestrating blindside after blindside. Sadly, he burned a little too many bridges with such a flashy game and got third place after a measly one vote at the finale. Elliot played all his cards on Survivor, so he hopes to take a different approach now on the challenge. The world saw him as a cunning backstabber, so how will he from his redemption arc? 
Seriously, KYR? You're bringing back another member from the Braun tribe? Yeah, well, hey, Lee had the biggest comeback ever on the Survivor season. She was voted out first, won a comeback competition, made the merch, and only got sent home because her ally, Elliot, turned his back on her. A little birdie told me that those two have not spoken after the show, so of course I had to bring them back together. I'm chaotic like that. <laughs> her childish trait has evolved into a competitive one after her time on Survivor, and she's back because she believes she can do anything, and the challenge is just a chance to prove herself even further. Wait, did he just... Yep, I sure did. I brought back the whole Braun 4. Just like how the Challenge USA brought back the whole Big Brother Alliance. I did too. Drama, you see. Makoa was voted out in 4th place just shy of the finale when Darling and Elliot both cast their votes on him. He was visibly disappointed then, but it fueled his fire to come back and maybe plot some revenge. But at the same time, as a family man who loves the outdoors, the prize money still comes first, cause revenge is sweet, but family. Family. The self-proclaimed evil genius is back from Sim's big brother. Meet Isaiah Green, although he's kind of hard to forget if you've watched the season. He's known for being a chaotic presence in the house and for his never-ending crush on Sabrina. Dear God. He finished in 7th place after being a victim of a double eviction. Isaiah still thinks that he is the and he has all the muscles and the charm to weasel his way to the end of the challenge. We shall see, but I'm giving him another go. If anything, he can stir up some drama on the yacht. If Makoa was the blueprint, Jorge is the final product. The sad boy had a roller coaster of a journey in the Big Brother house, from being nominated in week 1 to claiming HOH week 2, and sadly backdoored in week 3, just shy of making the jury. Jorge showed a great deal of promise, and the jungle adventurer is back for more on the challenge. Maybe without the constant pressure and being cooped up in the house with yelling people, this cutie can perform better. Wait a second, isn't the challenge like that too? Sabrina is also coming back, representing Big Brother, and boy, is she in for a tree when she finds out that Isaiah is also on this season. <laughs> Sabrina is the evil queen of the house, but she went a little bit too far when she yelled at her closest allies, prompting them to blindside and backdoor her, but at least she made the jury. I don't know if she's learned anything from her experience on Big Brother, but she knows she's the real deal, and she's hungry for the money, so she's gonna grab this game by the boat and make it hers. Queen Sahari is back! Bow, people, bow. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but Sahari is cheerful, lovable, and quickly became a fan favorite from Sim's Big Brother. Many, including myself, were upset at her early eviction, so the preschool teacher is back for more on the challenge. She's also dressed in slightly more comfortable clothing, and she continues to represent the moms and the ladies in the house. If you're wondering how she got off work now that the whole world knows about her, well, let's just say that the school fancy themselves a little celebrity Fun status. <laughs> Good luck. Sahari, we love you! And now, for the people I picked from my Let's Play series or one-off videos, first of whom is Connor from my Twin Welters Let's Play. Connor is my baby, okay? But the baby's gonna leave the net someday. I allowed him to leave Newcrest for the duration of this show, and his twin sister Corinne is taking care of the bank account and the properties for now. Connor is an aspiring gardener and woodworker, and he is ready to win some money to take his router business to the next level, starting with that sad-looking Newcrest Park. From my most recent Ultimate Werewolf video, let's welcome Dylan Strickland. Dylan is, in fact, a werewolf as revealed in the video, but none of the other contestants know that, so this should be fun. Dylan managed to escape from Tinyville after being found out by the villagers, but murderers can't be choosers, so here am I putting him on the challenge. Maybe he can win some money and buy a house somewhere and live happily ever after. He is fit after all, but he can be a little mean if his werewolf form doesn't scare away his competitors first, that is. <laughs> This hot stuff came all the way from my odd one out video, where we had to sniff out the fake vegetarian among the real ones. Giovanni technically won the game since he along with his housemates managed to find the fake vegetarian, but there wasn't any money involved since I didn't promise any. <laughs> what I did promise is a chance for him to compete on the challenge. So here he is, and here's some more info about him. He is active and cheerful and very very calm, almost too calm so stoic. He teaches yoga and basically lives at the spa, so he's more than fit enough to take on this show. 
And finally, the villainous Valentine herself, Nicola Thorne, is competing. Yes, I learned after the fact that she was a pre-made sim, and her name is in fact not Nicola, but in my world she is. Nicola went on her quest to break up 10 perfectly happy couples, so that level of chaotic energy has earned her a spot on the show. She was already evil and outgoing, but her newer traits include seducer and hates the outdoors. A perfect specimen for a show like this. <laughs> what could go wrong? Nicola was hoping to win some money to go on to live a lavish lifestyle, so maybe then she doesn't have to homework anymore. <laughs> And next, moving on to the newcomers! All newcomers are submitted by you guys, even though I didn't even ask for it. <laughs> Y'all really got me covered. Well, first on the list is Apollo Ferris. Apollo is created by Simming Queen 101 Apollo is an art lover and a genius geek, but don't be fooled, he's also super competitive and materialistic, which means money is definitely the priority here. Apollo is a student, and he is super smart, and his aspiration is to master the arts, but at the same time, write books and research papers and all that jazz to understand the scientific sides of art. Like art history or color theory, I don't know, I never did art in school. But what he needs is funding, so here he is. Apollo may look nerdy, but underestimating him is exactly what he wants his competitors to do, so he can snatch up the win from under their belts. Next on the newcomers list is Ilana Camilo, created by the user Nino Chiulo. Ooh, quite the tragic past for this woman. So, Ilana's father left her with nothing when she was young, and her ex cheated on her recently at a pufferfish protest. Who does that? So, yeah, she's a huge advocate for men are useless. <laughs> That's why she's on the challenge to overcome her difficulties in life and to make a name for herself. She's also an aspiring politician, so she knows how to debate herself out of tough situations, and she's a huge advocate for strong women. She's one of the two adults on the show, so definitely proving that age is also never a factor when it comes to the challenge. Challenge. And Ivy Parr is next! Ivy is created by Get and Ghost, and although she is initially casted for Survivor or Brick Brother, I decided the challenge is also perfect for the young woman. A Sulani native, Ivy is a single mother who had two children at a very young age. Motherhood is rewarding, but also quite a tiring process, so she never got to do anything else or pursue her dreams. But now that her kids are grown into teenagers, they want her to start checking off that bucket list, starting with my shows. What an honor. <laughs> I kid. She is neat, cheerful, and a health nut, so she will definitely mother the challengers a little bit, but she's doing the challenge for her two kiddos first and foremost. And the final person on this cast is Jia Yan Chang, who also goes by Yan. Also created by Nino Chiulo, Yan is active, self assured, a romantic, and lives a lavish life. This guy knows that he's hot stuff, and he pretty much always gets his way with his looks. But like most of us millennials or Gen Z, he's broke AF, so he's on the challenge to use those muscles and charm to get something into his bank account. He's super fit and has some mixology and cooking skills, as well as a little bit of those childhood piano skills, because all of us Asian kids are forced to play instruments as a child. <laughs> Yen is not afraid to start some drama or flirt his way to the end to make sure he doesn't get sent to the elimination round. So his journey should be a very interesting one to watch out for. Whew, that was a lot. Bravo if you got all that. Well, that concludes our cast list. The only thing that isn't mentioned in this video, because there is so many, are some of the predetermined relationships that the cast have, like Sergio and Zahara being friends, or Elliot and Lee being slight enemies. But no worries, it's only a little boost, like 12 relationship points at the most. It doesn't even make them actually friends in the game. <laughs> but these relationships will be explored at the premiere. Speaking of that, the premiere will come next Friday, where we may potentially already be saying goodbye to two people in this cast. Oh boy, I hope you're excited cause I'm ready but also not ready. <laughs> Be sure to comment down below who you're rooting for to win the challenge too. There's a ton of people here so don't worry if you list like 10 or 12. <laughs> If you enjoyed that video, please be sure to leave me a like, cause that will help me a ton. I hope you have an amazing weekend ahead, and thank you for watching! I'll see you at the premiere!